What's up everybody, Mark here, Waste Deep Weed Fishing, Southwest Florida. Hope all is doing well. Today is the day, I know you've all been waiting for it, and yes, today I'm going to give the full description on how to use Bugs Fishing Lures from my Waste Deep Weed Fishing Flats Kit. So today we're gonna start it off very easy. Um, we're gonna start with the Beastie Bug, we're gonna dissect it, we're gonna talk about where you use it, why you use it, how you use it, and I'm also going to show you, my fans, my viewers, my clients, my clients to be, what type of action we need using the fishing rod to get these bugs to do what they're supposed to do. Now, as you saw from my past videos, um, they catch everything. So you know, there's no doubt about it. I've video, you know, I've recorded it for you. I've caught snook on them, I've caught redfish on them, I've caught sea trout on them. Everyone have seen, everybody has seen that. So we don't really need to go into, do they work? Yes, they do. They absolutely work. But you have to know how to work them. That's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna talk about how to work these bugs. But before we do that, I do wanna say thank you to all the sponsors out there, everybody who subscribe to the channel, everyone who throws the thumbs up, everyone who leaves a comment, um, you know, it, that's very important. Without you guys, you know, putting a thumbs up on the video or leaving a comment, you know, hey, a good job or nice work, um, the algorithms don't push the videos out. The more people that resonate with the channel and make the comments and throw up the likes and push the channel and talk about waste deep, the further the channel goes, the more support it gives me and it enables me to continue to keep doing this and helping all my angler friends around the world. So without, with, you know, with that being said, you know, thank you to all the sponsors, um, you know, a special thank you to um, Bugs Fishing for working with me and helping me put together this kit uh, that is designed for us, by us. First things first, let's talk about the Beastie Bug. Now there's two bugs that come in the kit. We've got the backcountry uh, beastie bug, which comes in at a quarter ounce, and then a fan favorite, the blue crab beastie bug that comes in at an eighth of an ounce. Now there's a reason why I decided to put those two weights in. Okay, sometimes you have shallow water, sometimes you have deeper water. So the color patterns are similar, the actions are the same, except one thing. When you have a shallower water condition, um, the eighth of an ounce, especially when you're sight fishing, um, is going to land a lot softer than the quarter ounce. So there's a time and a place for both. They both work equally well, but again, a time and a place for both. So we're gonna start off with the beastie bug. Number one, it's weedless, okay? You see that? It's weedless. That means you can throw it pretty much anywhere. If you've seen where I fish in my videos, grass, mud, against the mangroves, against the oysters, everywhere where there's structure. And the one great thing about these lures are they don't get hung up. I can throw them anywhere and I can work them in various different ways to represent different, um, you know, different types of food that redfish, snook, and sea trout eat. I can make this look like a crab. I can make this look, um, you know, like a wounded shrimp. I can make it look like a bait fish. All right. So we're going to get into that a little bit later, but let's talk about the construction as you, of this bait. As you can see, quarter rounds jig head. It lays flat. When the when the current is moving, this fur is going to breathe and act alive, and of course, the appendages to look like legs of a crab, uh, depending on how you use it. Now, if you use it a different way, this could also look like the back end of a bait fish or the antennae of a shrimp. Very unique bait. Moving on, let's talk about the beastie bug. Now, this is one of my favorites. Um, not that it's caught more than the backcountry. I just like the way it looks, to be honest with you. Uh, it, does, it, it, it catches just as much as it is the backcountry bug. There is no difference. Um, I do really, really like the red appendages at the ends with, with the blue. 
um, you know, the fur as far as the color, you know, the white and the, the moss green just really, really blends in, the, you know, with the environment that we're fishing. Um, you know, you have a little bit of algae, you have grass, you have, you know, those earth tones on the bottom, that sandy, that, 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 that sand color, that darker mud color, those darker mangroves. And this is just the idea, you know, these two bugs are the ideal bait to throw for redfish against the mangroves in Southwest Florida. They just work, they just work. And again, I'm gonna show you in a description with the rod, how we're gonna use it, what kind of action we use, and why they work. So let's, let's go to the next step. Where do you throw them, okay? Well, it's simple. Pretty much anywhere, okay? You can throw them anywhere. You can throw them out in an open flat, flat in a pothole. Um, you can use them against the mangroves. You can throw them against any type of structure, through near blowdowns, um, oysters against the bank, uh, mangrove root systems, skip them under overhangs. I prefer to use them around oyster and mangrove. That's me personally, okay? That doesn't mean that you have to do that. I like to throw these in low water, low water conditions, okay, as the tide is coming in against the mangroves around structure. So preferably what that really means is, you know, find an oyster bar that with a mangrove shoreline. That would be the ideal spot for me to be throwing the eighth of an ounce um, beastie bug. Now, if the water has, it has been pulled in and the tide is up, well then I would move from the eighth of an ounce to the quarter ounce because I want that bait to get down to the bottom and stay there. I want that bait to look like either a wounded shrimp, a wounded bait fish, um, or a wounded crab or a slow moving crab, depending on what I see in the water at that time. So those two lures that you just saw are included in the kit. Okay, we're gonna go through the whole kit in, the, in, in, in a summary of a couple of videos. I can't do it all in one video because the video will be just too long. So today we're starting with the Beastie, the Beastie Bug Kit. Now we're gonna move on from there. Um, I do wanna say thank you to all the sponsors out there, especially Bugs Fishing Lures, for working with me and helping me build this kit. Um, and what a kit we built. Um, it is designed for us, by us, for the flats of Southwest Florida. It can be used everywhere in the world, but I personally designed this from 22 years of experience walking the flats in our area and I know they work. I wouldn't put my name on it if it didn't. All right guys, so let's take a quick break and we are gonna go right back into rod action, so stay tuned. All right everybody, we're back. So, first thing is first, a uh, question that definitely needs to be answered. Um, a lot of people have been asking me, well, you know, how, what are you throwing, you know, these bugs lures on? What are you using when you're on the water? Well, I'm gonna show you my everyday driver right here. This is what I use when I'm filming, when I'm guiding, when I'm doing seminars. This is a seven foot medium action St. Croix Avid Inshore matched with a Shimano Stratic FL3000 with about 240 yards of eight pound braid. That is what I use. My, 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 personal, opinion, my personal opinion on uh, best flats rod all around, this is it. I've tried them all. And again, if I'm not sponsored by St. Croix, you know, they're not paying the bills, they're not paying me to tell you this. Basically what this is, is my personal opinion. For what I do, throwing artificials for snook, redfish, and sea trout on the grass flats and the mud flats of southwest Florida, there is no better combination in my opinion. So with that being said, let's go further and discuss exactly when to throw this, why to throw this, and how to throw this. So we're going to start off with the fan favorite, one of my favorites of the kit, the eighth of an ounce. Blue Crab Beastie Bug, okay? So 
from the description earlier, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm, I'm gathering that everyone out there got a, a good description or a good idea of, of what this is supposed to represent. So now I'm going to show you two things. Number one, where do you throw it? What happens when you, you know, walk back out on the flat and you go there in the morning? Well, where, where do you start? Okay. So right now we're in summer, the spring and summer months. Uh, the water is heated up to close to 80 degrees. Uh, we're going to have big swing tides now uh, versus the winter where we only had maybe a one foot, a foot and a half of water coming in. Now we're going to have two and a half feet to three and a half feet um, tide swings. So preferably you want to get out there in the morning very early because the water is warm now. Um, you're looking for a wind from like one to five. This way there's just a little bit of ripple on the top. So if you are sight fishing and the water is clear enough, the fish don't see you. Um, also, when you're fishing for redfish, of course, you know, everyone wants to throw a top water in the morning and by all means, go ahead. But with that being said, you know, if you want to be quiet and not let them know that you're there, start with the beastie bug. Okay, the beastie bug will let you move in silence, move in stealth. You can find your structures, find the areas where the redfish are supposed to be. If you've watched my videos or you've booked a charter with me, you have learned how to find those zones already. And if you haven't, feel free to give me a call. You can book a charter, 239-823-2183. Book a day out with me, book three days, five days, seven days, two weeks. I have options for everybody who wants to learn how to wade fish with artificials in the grass flats of Southwest Florida. So, getting out on the water, okay, first thing in the morning, if you are, you know, strictly hunting for redfish, okay, and you're not worried about anything else, I would suggest starting with the beastie bug. Why? The water is smooth, the sun has just come up, and there are probably cruising fish, okay, looking to eat. This is the bug that you want to use to sight cast for those fish, okay? It drops in the water quiet. You can give it small twitches to make it look like a moving crab. You can pop it a little bit harder to make it look like a shrimp, or you could go ahead and reel and twitch and reel and twitch and make it look like a fleeing bait fish. So, I hope everyone understands that there's three different ways to use this bait. The most effective way is going to be the way that I show you right now. This is the technique that I use on a regular basis, okay, for catching, well, sighting, catching, and releasing redfish. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to cast my line out. All right, once the line is out, okay. And I use that eight pound braid so I can get that lure as far away from me as possible. What I'm gonna be doing, okay, I'm gonna let out some line, is I'm gonna simply be reeling and twitching. Reeling and twitching. Reeling and twitching. Very simple. Let me do that again um, for you guys so you can see it. Let me let out some more line here. Okay. So what I'm going to be doing, again, let me show you with the beastie bug, to make it imitate a crab, is I'm going to reel very slowly, and I'm going to twitch it. I'm going to reel, and I'm going to twitch it. I'm going to reel, and I'm going to twitch it. That's it. There's nothing, there's nothing more to it. Okay, now that's just to make it look like a moving crab along the flat. And I suggest throwing that against lower water against the mangroves, where you see actual mud between the mangrove and the water line. Okay, throw it right up into the mud and move it out. Okay, into the first trough against the mangroves. That would be my suggestion if you're going to start with the beastie bug. Okay, in that particular situation. I'm going to do it one more time for you guys so you, can, so you get a better understanding. I'm going to get real close to the camera. Okay, guys, so you're reeling and you twitch, twitch. Small twitches, not big pops. Reel a little bit, twitch, twitch. Reel a little bit, twitch, twitch. Reel a little bit, twitch, twitch. And I'm talking small twitches. Look at my finger. Twitch, twitch. Twitch, twitch. Just enough to get that fur to look like it's breathing. Okay? That is one way to work the beastie bug. So stay tuned. I'm going to show you the next way. Okay, everybody. I'm glad you're still here with me. I hope I'm not boring you with this tech stuff, but this is very important. 
if you want to be successful at using the bugs from my weight fishing kit, this is what you're going to have to do. It's not hard, okay, it just takes a little time, and again, you need to do your homework on where the fish should be. Okay, it's very important. Don't expect to just walk out onto a flat and you're going to catch a redfish. Do your homework. Watch my YouTube channel. Find out the different zones at the different times of the year, at the different temperatures, with the different winds, where those feeding zones are going to be. That's, once you know that, then you can use these applications, okay, to consistently catch redfish. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about making this bait look like a shrimp, a fleeing shrimp. Now again, it can be used in a shallow water application, all right? I'm not saying it can't. I prefer to make, when I'm using this to mimic a shrimp, I'm looking for water between a foot, a foot and a half, up to two feet against the mangroves, okay? One and a half to two feet up against the bushes and what that's going to do is now it's going to have all those fish, fish concentrated underneath those mangrove overhangs okay listen to what I say when that water is up the redfish and the snook are going to be concentrated underneath those overhangs okay so you don't necessarily have to I mean you can you know, still throw this and then make it look like a crab, but you can also add another weapon into your arsenal by making it look like a fleeing shrimp or a fleeing bait fish. But we'll do the fleeing shrimp first and then we'll move on to the bait fish next. So again, all of these techniques apply in the summer, end of spring to summer patterns. Winter, fall, different patterns, different strategies. This is just for now. This is what I suggest to you, the angler, to use if you're using the bugs when you're out on the flats now. Okay, so now that we have that out of the way, let's get to it. So first thing we're gonna do, of course, we're gonna throw our cast out. All right, now in this retrieve, we're going to be reeling and pop, pop. So let me do this again so you can see it. Reel it, pop, pop. Reel it, pop, pop. Reel it, pop, pop. So what you're gonna make that, that fish, excuse me, that bait look like, you're gonna have it reeling, pop, pop, and then drop. Reeling, pop, pop, and then drop. So it's gonna look like a shrimp scurrying. Sinking, scurrying. F shrimp are not fast acting um, organisms, okay? Shrimp, will, you can see them sometimes just laying, and when they get scared, they pop and they move away. Well, that is what you're trying to achieve with this bait. You're trying to achieve that same action. You want the bait to basically drop, sit, flee, pop, pop. Let's do it again. Cast, let the bait drop, twitch it, pop, pop, and flee. So drop it, pop, pop, flee, drop it, pop, pop, Flee, drop it, and you, you want to keep that, that consistent, that consistent retrieve. Let's do it one more time so everyone can understand exactly how to do it. It's different from the crab. The crab is just a simple twitch, twitch, and a little bit of a reel. A little twitch, twitch, and a little bit of a reel. So basically, you're looking like a crab that is laying on the bottom, just walking around in the mud and the sand and then stopping. Walking in the mud and the sand and then stopping. With the shrimp imitation, okay, or shrimp presentation, you're making it look like a shrimp that's laying, getting scared, and then fleeing. So let's do it one more time. So we're gonna reel, pop, pop. Reel, pop, pop. Reel, pop, pop. Reel, pop, pop. One more time for you guys. Not that difficult, okay? Just look at my hands, what I'm doing. Reeling, pop, pop. Reeling, pop, pop. Reeling, pop, pop. Very, very simple technique and deadly, okay? Everything eats shrimp, okay? And I'm starting to learn everything eats crab as well. You know, just when I thought that, I didn't think sea trout ate a crab. Well, guess what? I've been catching dozens of them since I've got 
this bug out on the water. So again, we're working outside of the box, working you know, against what traditional inshore fishermen say or do. But I have 22 years plus experience of local knowledge, working local waters. And what I'm telling you works. I have it all on videotape for you to see in live action. So there's nothing that I'm giving you that isn't true. These techniques work. Now, of course, I can't give it all to you because I have to make a living. All right? I guide. So certain stuff is, is kept secret for my customers, my clients. But I'm giving you the bare essentials to get you started on the water. So the next thing we're going to talk about is going to be how to make this bait look like a fleeing shrimp. So hold on, the video is not done yet. Give me a second, I'll be right back. All right guys, welcome back to the last section of this video. Um, this particular method, I would suggest using if you are out and the water is up and you're not finding fish in the mangroves and you may be wandering across throwing against you know over potholes or throwing against the sandbar or working a um, a cut or a gut on the inside of a sandbar or even working off of a beach in the trough this is where this technique that i'm about to show you uh, can be used and is definitely deadly effective it's a little bit of a faster retrieve um, and it's, it's a constant movement because you want to make this bug right here look like a fleeing bait fish. So again, not that difficult. Um, if you follow the instructions here, you can see the, 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 the differences in how I twitch the bait. Um, casting distance is, is, is essential. Okay, if you have on too, you know, your line is too heavy and you can't stand farther enough away from where the fish are, doesn't matter. They're going to feel you. They're going to see you. So just keep that in mind. Make sure you have the proper gear when you're out there weight fishing. You want something that casts a long distance, that is very, very light, and does not put a lot of tension on your arms because you're casting lures all day long. You're not going to just go out there and have three casts and catch a fish and every cast. You're going to cast and cast, and then when you think you can't cast no more, you're going to cast some more. That is part of the game in weight fishing with artificials on the flats. It's consistent casting and picking apart the flat methodically and hitting all of the potential zones of where these fish should be feeding. So let's go on to the next section um, of this video and that is going to be making this lure look like a fleeing you know, mud minnow, a fleeing greenback, a fleeing pinfish, whatever, whatever you know is out in the water, okay? I mean I'm not saying that fish are blind, they can determine different colors but we're coming into the season where color it does play a factor but it's about profile and action okay so if they see a profile moving consistently and they're in that feeding mode and they're not underneath the bushes and they're out in the open flats feeding which sometimes they are okay they're not always against the bushes okay especially big trout in you know in the winter and in the summer they're, the trout are not in the bushes, okay? They're going to be on the open flats. And sometimes snook and redfish are going to be there just as well, sitting in a hole, waiting for the bait to be blown in with the tide. So this is how you conquer that obstacle. So what you're going to simply do is cast your line out and watch my hands, okay? Watch what I'm doing. You're going to reel and move, reel and move, reel and move. There's no twitch, twitch, pause, twitch, twitch, pause. There's no... Reel it, twitch, reel it, reel it, reel it, twitch. This is a steady movement. So you are going to literally cast, let the bait drop, hit the bottom, and you're going to very simply just reel, reel, twitch, twitch, reel, reel, twitch, twitch, reel, reel, twitch, twitch, reel, reel, twitch, twitch. One more time. Cast it, let it drop, 
Real, real, twitch, twitch, real, real, twitch, twitch, real, real, twitch, twitch, real, real, twitch, twitch, twitch. Switch it up. Sometimes do three twitches, sometimes do three, four, four twitches, sometimes do five. Reel it and go one, two, three, four, five, stop. Reel it, one, two, stop. Reel it, one, two, three, stop. So consistently keeping this bug moving and darting around. That is the ultimate goal. Keep it moving, look like it's, it is a fleeing bait fish. Make it look like something is chasing this thing down and the predators will come out to get it, okay? Now, I do also wanna tell everybody that if you go to the Bugs Fishing YouTube channel, you can actually see all of these lures, what they look like in the water, okay? Um, the owner of the company has done all the pool tests and have recorded, uh, excuse me, and has recorded what these baits look like underwater when you're moving them the way I'm showing you how, how they move. So you'll actually see what the fish sees underwater, okay? Um, I hope this all works for you. I hope you use this information. Take it seriously, okay? You see the videos. I'm not doing this because I just made this up or I, I invented the rock. These techniques are techniques I use with all types of baits, okay? But these specific types of baits, because of the way they're designed, their profiles and the way they breathe in the water, give an action and a profile like no other bait on the market, and that is why I've been so successful, so successful with them, and that's why I partnered up with Bugs Fishing to build the Waist Deep Weight Fishing Flats Kit. If you want to get, go ahead and get that kit, I have a link in my description. Just click on it, go to their website, scroll down to Lure Kits, <clears throat> click on that, then look for Waist Deep Weight Fishing Flats Kit. Click on that and go ahead and place your order. You will not be disappointed. I want to say thank you to everybody out there for all the love, the support, and all of the, the, the kind words that y'all give me to keep me doing what I'm doing, to keep the clients booking with me, and I will continue to keep giving you guys, my angler friends, all of the latest and greatest information on how to be more successful on the flats. Okay guys, see you on the water, see you on the next video. The next one we put out is gonna be all about the second generation redfish bug. See you then.